Hey everyone, it's Amy here. Welcome to my little yoga videos. Today I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the elusive core. And the reason I'm calling it elusive is because what I find as a yoga teacher is that most um, students that I work with are really disconnected from their core. And they have um, confusion, I guess is what you could call it. They have a lot of confusion about uh, where the core actually is, what is the core, how do you engage the core, and a lot of people, um, when they're instructed to activate their core, the first area that they tend to go to is their belly, and um, they contract their abdominal muscles. Now, um, engaging your abdominal muscles is great, and I actually do consider the abdominal muscles as part of the core, but I'd like to um, guide you a little bit deeper inside to access some of the, the deeper structures that make up your core that you know, lie a little bit more beneath the surface and actually have a lot more potency and power to them when they are activated and engaged. And, um, you know, this is a, a really big topic and I only have a few minutes to talk with you about it, but um, what I do want to say a little bit more about the core is that this disconnect is, isn't just in yoga students, it's in all of us, it's in humanity. And this disconnect to our physical core, um, it isn't just physical, it's also a disconnect to our, our emotional core self, our mental core self, and our spiritual core self, which um, yoga, the aim of yoga is really to reunite with this, this core place within ourselves. So through the physical body, that's one pathway, that's, that's like a bridge that you can take to um, begin opening to some of these more subtler aspects of the core of who you are. And on just the physical level, I see two things often happening. One is that people are, um, everybody's disconnected, and then um, a couple ways that the disconnect appears is, one, um, there's this collapse, and it may almost uh, appear or feel within yourself like heaviness and any of the postures that require you to to lighten up maybe an arm balance or even just um, moving around with your legs can feel really heavy mm -hmm. and that's um, what I call a little bit of a collapse where uh, the energy of your core is just kind of seeping out and there's no sense of engaging there's no sense of lift coming up through the center of your body where it's very difficult to access that now, the other extreme is where the core is, is extremely constricted and all the muscles surrounding those core muscles are also really extremely constricted and um, rigid, which doesn't allow you to, to gain access to that area and it actually just keeps you really numb to that area. So you may think that you're using your core, but really you're using all of the superficial muscles surrounding that area. and. Um, and once you can tap in and start finding some of these core structures that I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, usually what will happen is that you'll start to generate a lot more strength and power in your practice and this feeling of lightness um, and a quality of grace through your movements. Um, they won't be filled with as much effort by any means. Um, you'll definitely have this uh, ease as you move and hold your postures. So. What I'd like to introduce you to today, and this can be kind of like day one of how to activate your core, is um, the how to activate from the floor of your pelvis. And some people will refer to this as mula bandha or the root lock. So if you've heard that term before in yoga class and you've kind of wondered what what does the teacher mean when they say mula bandha, um, I'm going to be addressing that a little bit today. And just so you know, the engagement of Mula Bandha, it's very complex, it's, it's quite intricate, and it's really subtle. Um, but at first, you can be a little bit more vigorous um, as you're working on engaging it, so that you can just at least get in contact with it and start to try to feel kind of this area of your body in a really conscious way. So I'm going to share with you an exercise that I love to do with people to help them access their pelvic floor and to start getting in touch with Mula Bandha and how to engage it um, in your yoga practice. So um, I'm going to get set up and we're going to give that a try. 
All right, so I'm going to be introducing to you something that I call um, the diamond seat. And to set yourself up, you can just have a seat and <clears throat> bring the soles of your feet together and have the feet a little ways out away from your hips. So it's not like a traditional bound angle position where you pull the heels in really close to the hips. You're going to have them a ways out. And actually, when you look down, then you should see that the shape of the legs is creating a diamond shape. And when you look down, um, this shape that you're looking at actually is, resembles your pelvic floor, which is the area of our body that we want to get in contact with. And since it's the, the floor of your pelvis, um, it's the foundation of your whole torso. And when you learn how to engage from this place, you start to create a lot of lightness and support for um, the rest of your house <laughs> above the pelvis. So your, your belly, rib cage, neck, head, everything um, from the pelvic floor up is going to have a little bit more buoyancy, lightness, and um, a feeling of, of strength. So when you look down at the shape that your legs have created, both of your knees are kind of symbolic of your sit bones. And your feet are symbolic of your pubic bones, which you have two at the front of your pelvis. And um, your pelvis then would be your tailbone at the back. So I want, what I want you to do is um, rock a little bit from side to side and really get in touch with your sits bones got two of them and since you're at home right now probably all by yourself um, reach underneath your pelvis and and try to find actually each sit bone and use your fingers and just kind of massage into that area a little bit and kind of pull the flesh out um, we're going to be working specifically with the sit bones today and um, and a little bit with the pubic bone and the tailbone, but I really want you to, to especially be familiar with where your sit bones are, and I want you to have some, um, a little bit more sensitivity to those two bones so that you can start to work from them. We're gonna be moving from the bones. And um, this is just a great way to start, um, start trying to find this lift coming up from your pelvic floor. So you can let your hands rest on your shin bones or your knees, and if you'd like, even just letting your eyes come to close. And um, feel down into those two sit bones on the floor. And what I would like you to do is, as you breathe in, um, feel your two sit bones drawing in towards one another. And when you create that action of the two sit bones drawing in, you should feel actually like your legs um, squeeze in as well and your feet might feel like they press a little bit more firmly together and then when you exhale uh, try to feel that those sit bones just get to relax away from one another and as you do so you'll feel your legs releasing and the feet won't be pressing quite as hard um, this is kind of the, the beginning that I want you to get in touch with for Mula Bandha so let's try that a few times as you breathe in um, imagine you're sliding your two sit bones towards one another and just let your legs you know maybe lift up slightly and the feet press and then exhale try to relax the space between your two sit bones imagine them sliding apart on the floor and relax your legs and just repeat that a few times with your breath breathing in sit bones squeeze together breathing out try to relax your sit bones away from one another so that would be stage one, and then eventually um, you could include your pubic bones and your tailbone as well, and you're just going to try to feel all four of those bony landmarks um, as you breathe in. Imagine them cinching together and coming closer, and then as you breathe out, letting them all relax and release out away from one another. And um, this is the, this is kind of the the first part of your Mula Bandha. And again, we're, we're maybe doing it a little bit larger, a little bit more vigorous right now, just so you can start to get in touch with it. So on your inhalation, sit bones hug towards one another, pubic bone and tailbone also slide towards one another. And then as you exhale, all four points separate and release out away from one another. So I want you to um, play with this little exercise. I've, I've only got a few minutes, so I just wanted to introduce it to you. Um, this is a, a great exercise to explore in any of your seated poses where you need support for your whole spine, as well as your standing poses. Um, warrior two, warrior one, all of those, there's a little bit of this um, drawing in and up through the pelvic floor. And it's gonna start to give you a lot more lightness and a feeling of strength in your yoga poses. 
Um, if you have questions, you can comment on my page or shoot me an email, and I'll be uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, have fun exploring. I will see you next time.